Hi everyone, this is Mr. Go. Tonight we're going to take a look at how we use the Lewis dot diagrams to actually predict what their simple molecular geometries for these simple uh, molecules would be. Uh, first thing that we need to understand is that there's this thing called Vesper theory. Now, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, or Vesper theory, is just uh, exactly what it's stating. They're talking about valence electrons, uh, and they're talking about them in terms of pairs, and the fact that because these electrons are all negatively charged, they are all trying to get as far away from one another as possible. So when we draw the Lewis dot diagrams, note that we're drawing them on a two-dimensional plane. So when we fill this up on a imaginary element, we're talking about eight electrons that are spread out uh, around this atom, okay, as far away from one another as possible. Now take a look at the way I've drawn these. If we try to draw it in this way, understand that it seems like the furthest away that they can be is about 90 degrees. But these electrons are in three-dimensional space. So the furthest away that they can be can't be 90 degrees because um, this is actually much closer than they would be because okay, this is 180 degrees away from each other. And we're talking about the distance away from this part right here and this part. So in order to maximize their distances, these electron pairs, in this case, or lone pairs, for this uh, drawing right here, you have to think about them in a three-dimensional space. So let's try to go ahead and um, show you exactly what I mean. Uh, the way we're going to draw these are uh, in terms of the wedge and dash method. So, for example, let's say I have a central atom like this that has four things bonded around it. And let's say that those things are that are bonded around it are hydrogens. The way we draw them is like this. So the hydrogen is over here. A hydrogen is right here. A hydrogen is coming out away from the screen towards you right here, and then a hydrogen goes into the back like this, like so. And again, this is called the wedge and dash method. The wedge, as drawn right here, is something to indicate that this hydrogen is coming out of the surface or out of the page. The dash method or dot method back here is to indicate that the hydrogen is actually going into the page or into the surface of your actual drawing the way it is right here. So we use the wedge and dash method to show three dimensions in a two-dimensional plane, and this is how we're going to draw these simple molecules. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how we would draw a simple molecule. That's got four uh, atoms or four sort of electron pairs around it, uh, maximizes the total number, uh, the uh, bond angles between each one of these guys right here. So the perfect example would be methane, so that's CH4. This is the simplest hydrocarbon that we have. And carbon, if we draw its lowest dot diagram, has one, two, three, four dots around it like this. And um, since there are four hydrogens and each hydrogen has one electron, what we can do is form bonds right here. Form bond to another hydrogen here. Form another bond with this hydrogen. And another bond with this hydrogen right here. Now it looks like, again, that we have a 90 degree angle between these. But remember, because these are three dimensional molecules, we want to go ahead and show the wedge and dash uh, drawing to indicate its three dimensions. So let's redraw this. Let's go ahead and start out with the carbon again. But instead of the carbon having four dots around it, kind of like at the north, south, and east, and west side, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and draw a hydrogen up here, and a hydrogen over here. And one hydrogen coming out with the wedge, like so. And another hydrogen going into the back with these dashes, and like this. So this is the structure of methane. The shape, actually, is called a tetrahedral shape. Now, it's called tetrahedral because tetra means four. It's a four-sided figure, and each side is actually a triangle. So there's a triangle between one here and here and here. 
a triangle between here, here, and here, a triangle between this one, this one, and this one, and then a triangle between this one, this one, and this one right there. So those are the four triangles. That's why it's called a tetrahedral in shape. So that's sort of a simple example of Vesper, uh, a simple explanation of Vesper theory, simple example of a tetrahedral shape. Let's go ahead and take a look at some additional shapes in another video. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.